So obviously you talked about how, um, as a community, uh, you mentioned that the Latino community tends to be uh, community oriented, in some cases to a fault. In your work, both on YouTube and in your day job, uh, which we'll talk about, um, have you found that there are specific uh, needs for the Latino community in terms of personal finance education, ways in which they're underserved specifically, you know, questions that come up frequently, things that our audience um, should know about and know that they're not alone in. Absolutely. Definitely the number one thing I notice is being underbanked um, is huge or unbanked. Unbanked is obviously a huge problem. It just means like you don't have a financial institution where they you know, service you and you put money away. You just deal with cash. And um, sometimes that's by choice. Most of the time it's not. And I think so many factors can lead to being unbanked, like language barriers and, you know, the feeling uncomfortable when you walk into a financial institution, feeling not welcome. And there's a lot of different things culturally that I think can contribute to it. Um, but I think the huge thing is that when you are underbanked, you are being charged so many fees because you might have a bank account. But like, for example, uh, when my mom finally opened her first bank account, I was trying to tell her not to go with one of the big banks, but it was really hard to not go with a big bank because she lives in a neighborhood where the only ATM machines available to her are the big banks. You walk into a Dwayne Reed in New York City, there's a Chase Bank ATM. You know, you walk up the block, there's a Bank of America. But it's really hard for her to find like a credit union in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Like it's not, it's not common. So for her, it sort of almost makes more sense to save money by going with a big traditional mm -hmm. bank. And so um, once she finally opened her her Chase checking account, she called me up so frustrated because it had been like two months. She was just trying to not use the debit card and she saw like $10 less than what she had. And I was like, uh, I bet you I can tell you what it is. There's a management fee. There's a bank. Uh, there's like a, a monthly fee that comes with the account. Like, mom, you have to look at your statements. Did they tell you if there was a fee? She's like, well, she told me if I had $50 in there, then it wouldn't be a problem. And I had $50 in there. I'm like, okay, did you at any point drop below $50, like $49, <laughs> because if you did, they're gonna charge you the monthly fee. And she was so frustrated just by that, like thinking that you have $49 and then you check your account and you have $39, that doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people, but in the situation that you're in, in a low income community where every dollar can really be stretched and go far, that was so frustrating. And so she just immediately became disillusioned with her Chase account. Like she closed the account. She was very frustrated. She said, I'm just going to go back to using cash. I don't want to have a bank account because they're just going to hit me with all these fees. And I was like, no, mom, you see, this is why I was trying to tell you that it's about the institution that you choose and the right account for you. And it's just like, I find that there's such a distrust now, like there's a lack of trust in financial institutions. There's also like a complete lack of financial literacy. So not understanding what the APR, is, what does APR mean? How much interest are you getting in your savings account? Most don't know, um, especially when it comes to investing. I think I was literally reading like two weeks ago, uh, the 2019 Hispanic Wealth Report, which said that outside of 401k contributions through an employer, um, Latino community in the United States only has um, only 4% of the Latino community in the United States invests in the stock market, in stocks and bonds. 4%. Mm -hmm. That means 96% of our community is not taking advantage of the greatest generator of wealth in history. Mm. So we're so obsessed with, you know, real estate and we're so obsessed with, you know, cars and we're so obsessed with things that it's like, yes, some people can be successful in those, in that, in those areas, but long term over the course of your working life, the stock market is the number one way like you, to retire with dignity. And so it, it just pains me every time um, when I do workshops or when I'm you know, talking to people from my own community that I find out that they're either completely uninformed or completely afraid, like fear the stock market. Oh, that's too much risk. I'm going to lose all my money. And it just it's proof that there's not a lot of education and clarity around exactly how does investing work because there are tons of strategies you can use to lower the risk that you take when you invest so that you're not afraid that you're going to lose all your money. So it's just definitely a need for more financial literacy. Services, of course, are needed, but for sure, I think the education has to come first so that people know what are the questions to ask when I'm looking for the right institution and, you know, what are the things to look out for and watch out for? What are predatory type of behaviors that I should be aware of? And if there's a language barrier, it makes it even worse. So 
having Spanish service, like Spanish speaking agents at, you know, at, or bank tellers and stuff is really important. It's, it's always weird to me when I go to a community where like 90% of the people in that neighborhood speak Spanish and there's not a Spanish speaking bank teller. I'm like, what, how, what do you mean you don't have somebody who speaks Spanish here? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like you're not serving the community. So, oh, but they can call this number. You know, and so it's really frustrating. There's a, a ton of factors, I think, that contribute to it. But I would say that the top, top ones are, uh, for, for one, it's the language barrier in, uh, you know, underbanked and unbanked um, communities. And then also that lack of financial literacy, specifically when it comes to investing.